With Common IT, you can seamlessly orchestrate complex scenarios in a hybrid cloud environment. In this demo, I will deploy a simple web cluster with a load balancer, a WordPress blog, and a MySQL database. And I will also take care of the dependencies between these different components. For example, maintaining the list of upstream hosts of the load balancer. So when I want to scale my cluster, I need to add another web host but also to use Common IT to update the firewall um, of the database and the list of upstream hosts in the load balancer configuration. I will also show you how you can leverage the public cloud in what we call a cloud bursting scenario where you also deploy web box on Amazon EC2 for example to absorb a peak in demand that your private cloud cannot uh, support. Let me log in Common IT and show you what is already prepared over there. So I don't have any hosts yet, but I already have configured my platforms. So I have a public cloud platform, that's my Amazon EC2 account, which has been configured, and I have my private cloud, which is my uh, local eucalyptus deployment. I have set up two distributions. These are just enough CentOS 6.3. One is the EMI version, the other one is the EMI for uh, eucalyptus. And I have three applications defined, my load balancer, my database, and my WordPress blog. If we look at the Nginx configuration, we see there is an upstream host parameter. And the WordPress has a couple parameters, but one of them is the database host. That will have a dependency on the database. Finally, the database has a couple password, uh, parameters, nothing too important. Let's first deploy the initial cluster. For that, we'll use the command line. I have written a couple scripts that I will show you in a second. So I use my deploy script and I ask the machines to be deployed on my eucalyptus platform. So the script will trigger the definition and then the deployment of the database, the web and the load balancer. These three machines will be deployed in parallel. If we go into Common IT, we see now we have three hosts being currently provisioned. So to do that, I had to write a script. Um, I see that my Nginx is not yet, has no configuration yet. So the scripts I've written um, has a data section where I've defined a standard configuration for the machines on different platforms and applications. And this is my deployment script. Uh, it's written in Python using our library. Some simple commands to create a host, wait for the host to be, uh, or launch the provisioning of the host, then we wait for the database to be deployed. When the database is deployed, we can get its uh, public hostname property. Then we wait for the web host to be deployed, and when it is deployed, we can get its hostname as well. So at that point, we can actually get the settings of the WordPress application on the web host, and we can add a new setting with the hostname of the database that we now have since the machine is up. And similarly, we configure the load balancer when the web host and the load balancer are up. I've received an email from WordPress saying, telling me that the cluster is correctly deployed and configured. Now if I go back into uh, my console, I have the public hostname of the load balancer, and I can check that my blog is up and running. Yeah, we also see the three machines are up in Common IT. My load balancer now has one element in its upstream configuration. So let's just look at the blog. It's a simple WordPress blog, and we see it's being served by uh, the host named Web1. Also, going to log in to add a hello world post just to show you that it's really running on a live database and that that database will be shared across all the web instances. So that's it for a small post. So now let's say we have a very successful blog and we want to scale this blog up. We're going to leverage our private cloud for scaling. And we just uh, scale with one additional host. So I'm going to use my scale script, which will define the new web host and wait for the host to be deployed so here is the code. Um, 
it's checking that there is a database uh, already in place and that there is a load balancer. These are two prerequisites. Um, it will update uh, WordPress configuration with the host name of the database, launch the provisioning of the host. Here I create and then I provision. Um, wait for the host to be deployed and when the host is ready I can update the configuration of the load balancer. I could also do other checks like quality assurances uh, for example here. So now we see that there is a machine being provisioned and if I look at the configuration of my load balancer so far I only have one element so the new web host is not there yet. It gets deployed and the load balancer is being updated. So now if I check again my settings I see I have two new elements in my upstream host list. And If I look at my blog, I refresh the page, you see it's being served by the web2 host. So it's going to run robin between the web1 and the web2 host when I refresh the page. So now Let's say we actually really need to add a lot of capacity and that I don't have enough capacity on my private cloud. So I'm going to burst into the public cloud and I switch my platform to EC2 and I request three additional hosts to be deployed. So it's going to use the same script I've just shown you, but this time it will uh, trigger the definition and deployment of three additional web hosts and it will do that on the EC2 platform that was defined in my uh, data file. Again, it needs to wait for the web box to be deployed before updating the load balancer configuration. So we see now we have three machines being provisioned. And they are done, so it took me a bit more than two minutes. All my machines are up, and if I look at my load balancer, I will see I have five elements in the list of upstream hosts. If I refresh my blog, I can see that uh, some requests are being served by the new web hosts which are on EC2 and other requests are still being served by hosts on my private cloud. So I'm actually uh, bursting into the public cloud to add web server capacity but I keep my database uh, private. Of course I can downscale and in this case I'm going to remove four hosts from the cluster. I first need to remove the host from the load balancer configuration and then I can uh, shut down the machine. Maybe I need to take care of other things like uh, log files management or uh, syncing some file systems before removing the machine. I can do all that through command IT. I'm going to be back to a simple cluster with just one web box. So, all the machines are gone, removed from command IT. The load balancer configuration has been uh, correctly updated with only one upstream element. And finally, I can uh, completely. Yeah, let me just show you the blog. So now it's always served by Web1. And so finally, I can uh, tear down my cluster, and here I'm going to and destroy all the machines to wrap up this demo. So you've seen it's quite um, straightforward to orchestrate complex scenarios by just writing some code leveraging the Kubernetes API to deploy machines, configure them, retrieve configuration data from the machines and then update configurations of applications. For more detail check our website commodity.com and watch the other screencast. Thank you.